To start off, between the time I recorded this video and the Bernie video, I started changing around my stories a lot, so today I'm going to take a break and design some random characters. One of the harder things with anthropomorphizing arthropods is what details to leave and what details to keep. Take away too many and the character will at most look like a basic alien with forearms and maybe one bug feature. Keep too much and you'll basically have a giant arthropod from the Carboniferous period. The less you can easily translate a character to a human, the more anatomy and design problems you run into, or conversely, the more artistic freedom you can play around with. Final thing before the actual speed paint. I will be showing photographs of the animals while I'm drawing, albeit for very short intervals. The arthropods are a honeypot ant, a goliath bird eater tarantula, and a Mexican bean beetle, which is very similar to a ladybug. With that out of the way, let's actually start the video. First up is the honeypot ant. I initially had a character duo of mine of an ant fighter and a hype girl, but I decided to only do one. I made her a barista because honey is related to tea and coffee and all that other good stuff. I wanted her to look very busy and hardworking, so I filled her hands up with stuff and gave her a worried expression. That expression changes to a happier, more cheerful one later though, because I thought it would be cuter. I picked the honeypot ant specifically because I wanted to draw their large, more transparent gasters. Oh, and as you've probably noticed, ants antennas are not at the top of their heads. It's above their mouths, like a little mustache. Antennas often look like they raise above the heads, so I get it, but at the same time, you can always just look up a picture of an ant. All in all, I think I should have gone with the do I had in mind, but I still enjoy how I translated the ant to a more human body. Next anthropod is the Goliath bird eater. Fun fact, these spiders actually eat birds on very rare occasions, but they can still do so. This design is definitely my favorite, and I think I might keep her as a character. Her name would be Agatha, and her occupation is a butcher. In this world, I decided that regular arthropods would be less evolved versions of the anthropods, kind of like humans and monkeys, except they would eat the arthropods. Agatha is actually holding a June beetle grub. I think a lot of tarantula owners will feed them grubs as a treat, so I drew Agatha looking very excited to chop up and cook this grub. I also drew her with hairy arms, legs, and even regular hair because Goliath bird eaters have urticating hairs or fine hairs that they can kick up to make a thread feel itchy or to get in their lungs. Agatha was made to be very fat and goofy looking because that's how I've used tarantulas, a fat, goofier version of a regular spider. I ended up darkening her hair off screen to bump up the contrast between her hair and regular skin, or well, shell. And I could probably think of a better color for her outfit, but all in all, I like where she ended up. The final anthropod is the Mexican bean beetle. To be honest, this one is my least favorite, but I just think it's his pose. It covers up most of the design, even if it is cute and quirky. Bean beetles are notable for their lack of a carnivorous diet compared to other lady beetles. I made this fellow a florist with a bad habit of eating his own plants. I think he's the cutest one out of this batch, and I really like how his wings turned out. Even though I had to fiddle around with them a while, I still really like their shape and shine. I forgot a color in his pot though, but that's really not my own mistake. I think while I only ended up really liking Agatha, the other two still look nice. I also learned a lot about how I wanted to draw anthropod, such as how Agatha has eight spider legs, but the ant and beetle's first pair of legs got turned into arms. Forearms help with expressions and are less confusing than four legs, but spiders are known for eight legs, so I couldn't resist. It's a balance of recognizable features and readability. Till next time.